Welcome back. Today we're going to put the top on the sysport. But first, here's the jingle. The top once again is going to be 18 millimeter pine, 400 millimeters wide. <clears throat> Remember we're going to set the top forward 50 millimeters from this back edge and that was to give me an overhang here that we're going to put a bit of a decorative bull nose on. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we need to work out the length. Measuring across the front. Gives me two, three, three, five. Measuring across the back gives me two, three, three, seven. So we will cut this board here down to two, three, three, five. Cladding is going to cover the slight gap and that will just make it easier for us to fit. So come in to two, three, three. Five. Oof. Going to need a bit of support because it's quite a long piece of wood. And now I can line up my cut with my two, 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 three, three, five distance. Make sure we're square, which we are. Make sure we're in place, which we're not. And then we'll trim that down with our good old friend, the TS-55. And if our measurements have been good, this should now fit into place. That's got too much rubbish. <laughs> yeah, and that fits quite quite well. I want to just set the overhang to 50 to see what I think, 50 millimeters. So I'm just setting the set square to 50 millimeters. And now I can just pull out and to be honest with you, I think 50 looks a bit heavy. It looks a little bit too much. So I'm going to move that back and I'm going to try it to be 25. Set my square to 25 millimeters. Yeah, so that's 25 and that looks pretty good to me. So we we'll modify the design. 25, not 50, 50 look too heavy. 25 looks pretty good. Next thing, I want to put the bull nose on here, so we'll just route that onto this edge and then we'll get this top fitted. So I'm using a router bit that's going to give me this profile and I want that profile on the top of the wood and also the bottom of the wood and that's going to give me that classic bull nose look. This is the router bit for it and you can see it's got a bearing. So although I could come along and use the bearing to make the first cut, when I make the second cut, there's nothing for the bearing to run along. So instead, I'm going to use the Festool rail system to set, this, to set the position of this, and then we'll use the rail to give us a parallel cut on the top and on the bottom. 
my rails not long enough so I'm going to use my holy rail and my normal rail and I'm going to use these Festool connectors to connect the two rails together. These just simply slot into the T-trap, one at the top and one at the bottom. So we slide those two in, slide this one in upside down and then connect the rails together using those two connectors. Make sure the rails are flush, make sure everything's nice and square and there's nothing for the guides to catch on and tighten the top one down. Carefully turn the rail over and then you can secure the bottom one in the same way. And now I've got a super long rail. Going to use our guides that you've seen us use before. Just want to check that they slide smoothly over that join and they do. To set this up I'm going to use the centre marks on the, on the base of the router that shows where the cut is and I'm just going to move the rail so that gives me that perfect cut. <clears throat> I'm then going to use the reference mark or the reference gauge of the LR32 system to lock me in to that position. Number one. And number two. I can now use the reference marks to make sure that this rail is parallel <coughs> to the edge of my board. With that done, I can use the clamps from the LR32 system to clamp the rail into place. And I now know that the rail is parallel to the front of the board. With the rail parallel to the edge, I can now set up the router. Loosen off the knob and just bring out the base away from the edge. And I now want to set the depth of cut. Now I can plunge the router down and I'm looking for the bearing on the end of the router to be round about the end here. So as if it was going to run down that edge. And that's going to be good about there. Lock that down and now I can set that depth of cut on the post and lock that into place. So I now know that when I plunge this down, it's going to be where we need it to be. And just check that, and that's perfect. <clears throat> the next thing is, is to set the position of the router. So I now undo the knob, and I can slide this in. And what I'm looking for is, once again, that bearing to run just on the edge. And once I've got it there, I can put that into place. So that's all set up, my depth is set, my plunge is set, but we need to think about dust collection. Now because of the size of the bit I'm using, this guard here won't actually fit because the router, won't, the router bit won't pass through the hole in the middle. I want to get some level of dust going on here, so I'm going to use the edge guide. Now you may say to me, why don't I just use the edge guide all the way? It's exactly the same problem I have with using the bearing. It's great for what the first cut, but in the second cut, the edge is gone, it's moved back a bit. So therefore the two, you know, the, the top profile and the bottom profile wouldn't line up. But I can use this for a bit of dust collection. There's just enough room on these rods for this to slide to position onto that edge. And I can now just tighten that down. Tighten that down <clears throat> and lock it off. And just check that that is still sliding smoothly. And that also gives the router a little bit more support. And now I can use this dust guard underneath 
to give me some rudimentary dust collection. Now it's not going to be perfect, but it's better than nothing. And now we are we can go ahead and we can have a go at making this cut. There's the first cut, done. So it gives us a nice half, a bull nose. We can now turn over the board and use the same settings to give us a matched curve on the underside of the board. There you have it. We now have a bull nose on this top, which looks quite nice, I think. So this can now be fitted into position. Just want to bring this out to the 25 millimeter we had before. And we can secure this now into position with just some simple pocket hole screws. And there we have it. We have a top, we have a nice bull nose. Sides are all up, the holes are all drawn. Next job is to start to build the drawers and complete this thing. See you next time.